Grant Kid Bradley, and this is Rightly Talk, and I'm watching the Game of Thrones for the second time. In this video, I'm going to be covering my thoughts about the episodes I'm watching and the series in general of the first two episodes of the first season. It won't be a minute-by-minute -minute recap or breakdown of what I'm watching, but rather my impressions about what I'm seeing and from the perspective of someone who has seen it already. There are probably going to be some spoilers here, am I right? I'm totally right. There are going to be spoilers. I would further argue that this video would be pointless unless you've got a good idea of what actually happened during the show. There are a ton of YouTube videos out there about the flaws of Game of Thrones, particularly of the last two seasons. And I personally did not think the last two seasons were very much different in terms of quality or presentation of the previous seasons of the show. I think what happened is the audience changed and changed a lot, and the earlier seasons of Game of Thrones had been valorized past the point of all objective reason, and that the television has furthermore caught up to where, in production terms, the quality of the show had been at the beginning. So I'm interested to see if that's actually true. When I started watching the first episode, one of the things I noticed straight away is that Daenerys never had any good mental health. Oh, sure, one could say her brother is terrorizing her and Drago as her captor and eventual rapist was the reason why her mental health was bad, but she goes from being a sexually abused sister of a cruel asshole to the sex slave of the brutish Drago, and that obviously is not good for a person's mental health. And I think the second part about the brutality of Drago is easy to forget, since Daenerys convinces herself that her rapist is really her one true love. Drago bought Danny, and there are two very, very explicit rape scenes, and there can't be any doubt that Drago is a rapist, her rapist. And by the end of the second episode, Daenerys decides seducing Drago for their third explicit sex scene, and, you know, that changes and she seems to enjoy it. But the fact remains, she's at best making lemonade here. Now, this is one of the early things I had disliked about the books, too. Uh, Drago was not her husband. He was her owner and her rapist. So when Dandy convinced herself that Drago was the great love of her life, uh, that kind of hurt. This early bit with Danny is also one of the places where it's really clear the audience has changed. Later on the show, when Sansa is raped, it created like this outpouring of, of fury. When Danny, she spends the first two episodes being brutally sexually attacked, and then she falls in love with her attacker, but it wasn't a big deal when the show was aired. The brutality and violence was seen as part of the titillation that made the people love the show. And I'm, I'm going to move on to the Starks for a little bit here. Like, in retrospect, how much drama could have been saved if Ned Stark had just told Caitlin that Jon Snow wasn't his son? I know that Ned had taken a promise to keep Jon's parentage secret and everything, and that meant for nearly 20 years Jon was a source of humiliation for his wife, which she turned into cruelty towards his adopted son, Jon Snow. Yeah, and I know, the whole character of Ned Stark turns on the axes of his unyielding honor, and the best parts of the show are critique of the idiocy of that style of honor. I mean, for me, that's one of the good reasons to watch the show, the various ways in that honor hurts people. Ned was willing, and he did, punish his wife and his adopted son for honor, just as he was willing to throw the kingdom into civil war for that same honor. The people who use honor as a cover for their misdeeds aren't any better. I'm talking about the murderous cruelty of the Lannisters, for instance, who are going on and on and on about honor and paying their debts while lining their pockets, fucking their sisters, and murdering their enemies. For me, it's hard to tell what kind of honor is worse. Ned Stark's rigid adherence to honor, which causes so much pain, or the Lannisterian perversion of that same honor. Most of the show's best people are those that are considered at least somewhat, you know, beneath the standards of honor the women or the dwarves, the bastards. They're the closest people the show gets to heroes in the traditional sense. The people who at least try to temper Ned Stark's rigidity with decency while never descending completely into Lannisterian hypocrisy. It's also super easy to see why the show took off like it did, though. Nowadays, a lot of shows look as good as the Game of Thrones. Then, not so many. The production values of Game of Thrones are through the roof compared to everything else at the time. And furthermore, this was just after the Lord of the Rings movie franchise with its, you know, sexless saccharine view of the world, and the Game of Thrones is like a strong drink on a hot summer day. For a lot of people, the Game of Thrones exploded the idea of what fantasy could be from something that was for children into something that was for adults. The high point, um, unsurprisingly, is Sean Bean's slow burn of a performance. Playing a grim, resolute dude is almost all of his curriculum of the day, but he does it very well, and it's great to see him on screen. 
And of course, in the first two episodes, we are introduced to Peter Dinklage's stellar performance as Tyrion, which is the best thing about, oh, the first four or five seasons of Game of Thrones, and also the first four or five of the books. On the other hand, whenever the show leaves Westeros, it, the racism really cranks up. Amazingly, the racism in the show is absolutely dwarfed by the racism in the books. Oh my god, I can't even. I'm mostly going to ignore the books in these videos, but I really need to get that out, that the racism is much, much, much worse in the books. I mean, part of the reason I've kept reading the books is see how like comically over the top the racism in the books gets, but even toned down for the TV show, it's still pretty noteworthy. There is a whole lot of that thing where all people of color are just kind of thrown together. Uh, during the marriage between Drago and Danny for instance, all the extras are just kind of generically brown. Some are black, some are South Asian, some are Pacific Islanders, you know, whatever, just to get some brown people on the screen. They're all the same, right? In my head, though, the key moment about the absurdity of this crazy amount of racism is when Drago gives Daenerys a horse and Danny asks Sir Jorah how to say thank you in Dothraki. Jorah said, they don't have a word for thanks. Oh my god, that is such a complete and total load of bullshit. The Dothraki were based on Central Asian ranchers, mostly Mongols and Turks. And I checked it. Both Turkish and Mongolian, unsurprisingly, have more than one way to say thank you. Because of course they do. It doesn't feel like the Dothraki were based on honest to goodness Mongols and Turks, but like racist medieval stereotypes about Mongols and Turks. You know, they do stuff that they don't even know how to say thank you, or they're just throwing girls down on the ground and railing them from behind in public. And of course, they want our white women. The horror. It's super racist and it's not subtle. Of course, it's Game of Thrones, so there's a lot of sex exploitation. And this is like harder for me to parse. I don't think that boobies are bad, and I think it's weird that graphic violence is okay, but gosh, you can't show a dude's dick. Further, I know that much of the success of the show is the fact that the Game of Thrones was the first time a lot of people saw any sex and fantasy. I mean, yeah, sure, if you read books, there are whole genres of sexy time fantasy stuff out there. But has there ever been a fantasy television show that's had sex in it? After a decade furthermore of the stuff that went on The Lord of the Rings with all the sex was cleansing. But it was possibly overdone, shall we say. Anyway, those are my initial thoughts on the first two episodes of season one of the Game of Thrones, having watched it for a second time now. I'm Kip Bradley, and this has been Writerly Talk. I hope you like this video, and I hope you watch more of them in the future. What can I say except for be cool out there? You be cool.